Hey guys, in today's lesson, I want to show you what I think is possibly the all-time coolest gospel bass guitar fill ever. I'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, it's James here, and in last week's video, I told you the story of watching the film Stuart Little 2 with my four-year-old son and hearing this incredible track put a little bit of love in your heart by Mary Mary with this extraordinary bass playing on it. So much so, I started transcribing it. And last week, I released a lesson showing you some of the grooves that I discovered from it. But I've also had a bunch of guys, you guys, getting in touch with me saying, can you show me some of the awesome bass guitar fills that are in there? And I wouldn't want to disappoint because there was one fill in particular that when I heard it, my jaw just absolutely hit the floor. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But first off, I'm still not 100% sure who actually played the original bass line on this. I spoke to a bunch of guys who are in the know and they think it is the incredible bass player and producer Andrew Goucher. So if you know for sure who played this incredible bass ball, make sure you let me know in the comments below. So let's grab the iPad because I want to play you this incredible feel so you can hear it in action. It happens about 38 seconds in. So let's check it. So let's take it back. I just want you guys to hear that again because it's immense what he just played there. Okay, here goes. Oh, I love it. So as you can hear, that's a completely monstrous bass guitar fill, which I've taken apart note by note. So I just want to let you know, there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson. So make sure you click the link, which is in the description below, so you can grab your free copy and see this written out in standard notation and tap. So first off, let me play you this fill so you can hear it in isolation. <laughs> like so. But just before we take this apart, make sure you check out last week's lesson because we're going to use a four bar chord sequence, which is simply two bars of E flat seven and A flat seven, and then an E flat seven as our basic chord sequence here. And we're also going to use the third bass line from last week's lesson because the important thing is to place this fill in the context of a bass line. And I'll talk about how to do that in just a second. But let me just tell you the first ba the bass line that we're going to use here because it sounds like this. Which is simply two E flats like that. And then we're going to go from a G flat to a G natural to a B flat like so. And then we're going to go from a B flat to a C to an E flat like that. Like so. And then we are going to go from an F to a G to a B flat like that with a slide. So the important thing about this fill before we take it apart is the placement of it. And one of the things I love, and if it is Andrew Goucher playing this, I love that he does this because a lot of gospel players kind of do this, is that rather than placing the fill on the fourth bar of say a four bar chord sequence at the end, which fills are generally placed, what a lot of these guys do is they place it right at the beginning of a phrase. So right on beat one of a four bar phrase. So that's where they put the tension and then it re resolves in bar two, which is so, so cool. And it's important to be aware of that when it goes on. So let me play it to the backing track so you can hear how this fill is placed in context. <laughs> So the moment you've been waiting for, let's take this fill apart. Now, this sounds complex, but it's actually relatively straightforward once you break it down into smaller parts. So we're gonna do a few notes at a time. So what I wanna do is start off with the first six notes. Now this is over an, an E flat seven chord. And the first note of this fill is a D flat seven, which is the seventh of the scale. So we're gonna start off with a D flat, and then we're going to go to a C like that. 
and then we're going to go to a B flat to an A flat. So it's literally four notes of a scale. So play those first four notes and try and always play this with one finger per fret because you need that technique to make this work. So that's the first four notes and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to play the G flat and then we're going to hammer onto a G natural. So that is the flattened third to the major third which gives that bluesy sound. So this is the first six notes. Really, really just slow this down to begin with. When I first started learning this fill, I was playing it at that tempo, literally to get the notes under my hands. So that's the first phrase. Now the second little phrase is the next six notes. So we go to an E flat, and then we go to a D flat, and then the same thing again. So the first four notes of that six note phrase are that and then to finish it off we go to the B flat A flat so we end up with this and I recommend using the third finger and the first finger there like so so what we want to do is put those first two phrases together like this we we'll just do it super super slowly even slower than that Speed it up. Make sure you get that hammer from the G flat to the G natural in there because that's really important. Then to finish the phrase off here, and this is probably the most tricky part of it, and this is the best way I found it to work. So this is the last four notes coming up right now. What I want you to do is hit a G flat there at fret two, slide in to the third note like that which is the G there, and then hammer on the B flat. I'll try that again, like that, and then pull off to the G again like that. This is actually one of these phrases which is harder, slower to play, right? When you speed it up, you end up with this. Like that, and then the last note of the phrase is the E flat, which is down there. If you don't have a five string bass, the last note will work completely fine up the octave as well. Or we can substitute in something else from the chord that will work. But let me play the whole of that phrase now, just slowly. So what sounds like a super complex fill, which absolutely blew my mind, once you break it down, is actually quite straightforward. So let's play it a little bit faster. Like so. So let's put it in context now with the groove that I showed you earlier so you can hear what it sounds like. Guys, I'd love to ask you if you are enjoying this bass guitar lesson, please make sure you subscribe to the eBass Guitar YouTube channel because we release a lesson every single week to help you guys push your bass guitar playing forward. There is a red button somewhere around this video. If you click it, you'll be the first to know when a new lesson goes live. So guys, that's the fill in context. The secret is to break it down and play it super slow to begin with and just speed it up, maybe just two or three beats per minute at a time maybe over a week or two. It doesn't matter if it takes a little bit of time to install this into your bass playing. But I wanna leave you with one more idea. As I said to you earlier in the lesson, the unusual thing is the placement of this fill because it's on the first bar of a four bar phrase, which I love. The reality is you could place it wherever you want within the sequence over the E flat chord. The next most logical place is to place it on the fourth bar. So to finish this lesson of 
I wanna mess around placing this fill in different parts of the four bar sequence and then start to inject some of my own ideas so you can hear the kind of thing that I would naturally play over it. So I'm gonna leave you with me jamming and having some fun using this extraordinary gospel style bass fill. So that's the end of today's bass lesson. I'm sure you'll agree. That's an absolutely mind blowing fill. So make sure you download the free PDF so you can see the standard notation and tab so you can take this incredible fill apart. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward, jump over to ebassguitar.com check out the Bass Lab Plus. There's a full step-by-step -step program there for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player who wants to push their bass guitar playing to that advanced level. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com. Oh, I nearly forget, there's a link also in the description below where you can grab your free 14-day trial. Anyway, cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.